Hi everyone, I'm Josh Ferguson with US Cutter, and as you know, I'm pretty obsessed with white toner printing. So it's my, I'm very proud to announce today that we here at US Cutter are going to be finally launching the UniNet printers uh, from, I'm sorry, the iColor printers from UniNet. And today we have David Lewis uh, from UniNet with us, and he is going to show us everything there is about these amazing machines. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and take it over, David. So today, um, we're going to be focusing on a couple of different things. Um, first of all, we want to talk about the quality expectation for these printers. It starts before you even get it. I mean, the day your printer arrives, you know, you want to make sure you've got the best, uh, the best that you can have. From there, we want to do an overview of the iColor printers and, and their various uh, configurations. Then we want to look at how we can increase revenue by uh, improving production speed. You know, this is a question that we get asked a lot, and it's also a question that people make a lot of assumptions about. You know, people see some of these demos and they just make the assumption, crap, that stuff takes too long. We're going to debunk that today, and, uh, and I really hope that you'll pay attention to that. Then while we're talking about fast we're also going to talk about fastness how well does this stuff stick i mean what happens in the washing machine how do rip settings and washing machine settings affect the overall durability of these products and you know while we're talking in the areas where people are having questions you know another one that comes up is you know what do i do if my design is bigger than my printer you know, I can buy the little printer and save some money. I can buy the big printer and it's a good bit more expensive, but neither of the printers can do these big designs that some of us big, you know, Excel guys are needing these days. So we're going to look at that as well. And while we're looking at new market segments and, and you know, big sizes is, is certainly one of those new market segments, we're also going to look at how you can grow your revenue stream by uh, working in areas that trip, typically you wouldn't do transfers with. You know, things that are low temperature items uh, that, that, you know, that you hadn't thought about maybe doing uh, garment or, or, or transfer decorations with. So we're gonna be looking at those as, uh, as well. So it's gonna be a lot of information uh, we're going to try and cover this as concisely uh, as we can along the way. Okay, so you've ordered a white toner printer. Um, let's get started with what you get. You know, as I was saying, the delivery of the product is a real key part of this. I, you know, I, I hate that someone actually posted these pictures online, but, you know, you, you really don't want to spend thousands of dollars and have someone drop something off on your doorstep that may or may not be complete, all right? It's one of the things I love about what the Uninet guys do. Let's look at how they put these packages together. You know, they take that Oki box and they put it inside of this triple wall container and clearly package everything so that you're assured it's going to arrive alive. And that's important. The other thing is, is that, you know, you get so much more with these, with the uh, eye color printers. So here's the rip, the various software packages that come with it. When you unpack these things, you've got inside the black toner cartridge. You see it sitting up on top. You've got this nice laminated uh, checklist that tells you how to get started. I mean, you just go right down this list and you're ready to get started. And then the printer itself is pre-configured for transfers with the CMY and the white toner in the back. Now, while we're talking about white toner in the back, you know, let's let's look at what the different printers are. So we've got the the, the 600 printer, which is the 11.8 uh, by 52 inch size. We've got the eye color 500, which is the eight and a half by 52 inch size. So let's uh, while we while we've got these up, I'm going to uh, talk about 
some of the media options that you can use with these before we before we go too far in. So it's really important to understand this because you know these are printers that are light enough that you can take them to different events. You know, you can load these up and take them with you. Uh, you know, they're really desktop types of printers, so you can easily set them up wherever you want to, uh, to work with them. And both of the printers have a full 52 inch print length which means you know that i can load in media that's you know well 52 inches that's probably you know somewhere up here on a short guy like me but it means you know you can do banner size things or you can do um uh, big signs or things like that and even in the world of uh, transfer printing, you've got some media options that you want to take into consideration. I mean, these are just the four sizes of the uh, laser dark media from forever. You know, you've got the eight and a half by 11 size here that works in all of the printers. You've got the eight and a half by 17 size here, this sheet, eight and a half, 17, that prints in all of the printers. And then you've got your 11 by 17, which works in the 600. And you've got this 11.8 by 19. So 11.8 by 19 or also 12 and a half by 19, depending upon which printers you have. But this works in the 600 as well. Let's look what you can do with these, all right? You know, sometimes you want to be able to print things with the white underneath. This is a transparency. Here is a, uh, a window clean piece, all right? And this is printed with the white underneath so that you can peel it off and stick it. It's a right reading type of thing. Here's an invitation, an envelope. Uh, you might do brochures. Uh, there's a, a wide variety of things where you'd like to be able to put that white toner in the front. And with the iColor printers, both the 500 and the 600, you can absolutely do that. Then these are black, all right, real black. So you know the, the standard Okies, you have to mix CMY to get black. With this, you can print black. It's cheap black. I can print my invoices with this. So all you've got to do is go in and take out the white toner and plug in the black toner that's in the box when you got the printer. Put that black toner cartridge in there, and now it's a CMYK printer. Print your invoices, print your brochures, your marketing materials. You know, it's all right there in that printer. It's cheap black toner. Then you can upgrade your printer. So these are sublimation prints. These are all done with sublimation toner. You can get a sublimation toner set. You can get a fluorescent toner set. And speaking of fluorescence, the white is fluorescent, by the way. So all you've got to do is just simply pull these cartridges out and drop in the fluorescent, the sublimation, and you've got, the to you've got your printer configured for that kind of printing. When you pull the toner cartridges out, the rest of the consumables, the fuser that you see there, and then the last consumable is the transfer belt with the toner waste uh, basket underneath it, and that's it. So it's simple. Everything in it is simple to use. It's simple to get to, and it's simple to uh, simple to work with. So now, you know, we get to this point where people are asking, how fast are these, uh, th these laser transfer prints? The reason that that's an important question is because, you know, we do a lot of demos. I I've done a million at trade shows. Well, maybe not quite a million. But, you know, you come up and, and uh, there's the guy like me is standing there to, to do the demos. And he's talking and he's, you know, he's loading up a job and he's telling, well, 
let's play what what happens at these demos you know you have to print the online button to get the printer to start you have to wait for it to speed up and and come to temperature you load it in you're, you're standing there pressing it and waiting for the press then you're uh, uh you're you're peeling it uh and then after peeling it you know you're loading up the shirt and and you're pressing that and uh, you're putting the media in and then after you press that and you're taking it out and you're trying to figure out how am i going to cool this thing off what all am i going to say while i'm waiting for all of this then you know we've got to peel it off it has to be peeled off carefully then it's got to go back into the heat press we've got to cover it up we've got to press it again then you know you're sort of shaking it out and then you're you know you're showing them them you know here's a here's a great looking shirt all right but heck how long did that take to do that i mean six minutes 45 seconds you're looking at six to seven minutes for pressing shirts and this is what everybody has in their head and if you know if if you're a small volume shop and things like that, that doesn't, you know, you don't mind that, all right? But, you know, everybody that's trying to do some production, everybody that's trying to do some volume, you know, they they look at that amount of time and it doesn't matter how much it costs. It doesn't matter what the consumables cost. It doesn't matter anything. That just takes too long. And that's what everybody has in their mind. Well, and I, Josh, I want to thank you for this, buddy. You know, he and I have worked on uh, on this particular piece to really show the potential as to what you can actually achieve with uh, high speed production. And I, I'm going to ask everyone here to please pay close attention because it's going to go by kind of quick. But it's going to be really important that you watch the, 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 the clock down in the corner so you can see what the real time that's being spent and also watch what happens. Now, now Josh, are you there? Are we there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm just answering yeah, some also, questions. Your job, at, your job at U.S. Cutter is making shirts all day, right? Exactly. <laughs> 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 That's what it is. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I don't make sure too often. You, you, uh, you may not actually be a highly trained uh, uh, t-shirt transfer decorator, dude. Right? That's, that's clearly. It's going to be very clear in this video that I'm not. <laughs> All right, folks, watch what Josh did. This is amazing, and I, I have great thanks to him for putting this together. Come on, let's play this. So first off is he set this printer up so that it's not waiting. You notice he's not pressing the online button at all. And then I saw this, uh, this, this press. This is amazing. You know, it's, uh, it's what's it called? A Sacabo? Yeah, uh, that, that is our Sacabo Smart Press. And we have it in our dual platen setup right there. Um, it's got quick change release pla plates. That way, if you wanted to do something smaller than that, you could. Uh, but you can see I'm using the larger ones right here for this job. Uh, it's a great so press. What you're doing here, and this is, you know, you started off by uh, heating it up, you know, getting it going. And then once everything starts getting to heat, you know, when you're working in high volume production, faster is better. You know, the, it, the heat stays up on everything when you're moving quickly. Uh, the operator, regardless of how, how experienced and well-trained he is, he stays engaged. And pre-planning for your jobs makes for a better production environment. You know, notice how he's got a table set up. You know, he's putting his sheets, spreading them out so that they, you know, that they don't get mixed up together. And he's working this in a very systematic fashion, very quickly, back and forth between each one. He's got his, he's doing his peel, then he's doing his setup. And by the time he gets that done, then he's ready to pop it over and, and do it over again. And then we move into the shirt production phase. And again, so he's pulling these shirts off, setting them off to the side so that they have the opportunity to cool down and be ready for the peel. And, you know, so this is a, a, a very effective production workflow that he's putting together. Now, we're doing 10 shirts. This is 10 shirts from start 
and the start is from the printer all the way through to final completion. And you're going to be amazed at the time that, uh, that it actually ends up taking. <laughs> I tell you, you do an amazing job with this, buddy. I mean, this is, you know, this is money right here. You know, how much money is this, all right? So when you're looking at me doing them, you know, six minutes and 45 seconds. So that's about eight shirts in an hour, all right? So, you know, if you're paying me $20 an hour to make shirts, then I'm costing you about $2.50 to make that shirt. But the most important aspect of it is, is that what's, what's the revenue? What's our revenue at eight shirts an hour? What we're bringing in, if we're selling those shirts at say 20 bucks a piece, you're talking $160 an hour in revenue. Now, if you look at the two minutes and 51 seconds, all right, that's 20 shirts an hour, 20 shirts an hour. So you're looking now, you know, a dollar to make the shirt. But the most important aspect of it is that's $400 an hour in revenue. That's in the park with screen print. And I'm telling you, this industry can compete with screen print. There's just no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So fast, fastness. That's what we want to get to next. Fast to fastness. You know, what's the durability of these designs on the shirt? You know, if I'm competing with screen print in terms of my revenue possibilities, can I compete with screen print in terms of durability? And you know, there's all kinds of stuff that's out there being said about this. And we really wanted to get down to the facts. What is really happening in the washing machine? But before we dive into the washing machine, let me set up the stage here. So we've got a We've got a big ongoing wash fastness test that we're running here at AW. This is uh, testing a, a bunch of different media on a bunch of different shirts. And it includes, of course, the laser dark that we're talking about today. Here's what we did. And let's bring this up, if you would. We selected two designs that we wanted to work with. So one is this dark background design that's got a big chunk of white in it. And we wanted to print it with a solid print like you know a lot of people are doing. And then we also wanted to print it using a uh, the rasterization function that's in RIP. Yeah. Rasterization for one of these is the Euclidean dot. So it puts the little holes in there. And then the second design that we selected is one, and we'll get there in a second, <laughs> is this family design. So another, it's a big design. These are tabloid size sheet. It's a real bright design, a lot of white, a lot of really bright colors. For all of these, you know, we set the white to about 150%. And again, we're printing this with the solid print, like you see here, this big uh, plastic kind of thing. And with the rasterization on this one, we put the lines in. And on this one, again, this is this big solid print. And put the dots in. Then we up. Basically, 
basically we've got four shirts here. We've got the control shirt that um, that we didn't do anything with, and then we've got three others here that have gone into the wash. You can even tell here we we sewed on labels onto the sleeves so we could keep track of. Uh, what's what's happening with them because this is an ongoing project that we're we're still running it at this point but let's see what happened so using a regular you know my home washing machine all right so i took them home and uh, confiscated uh, confiscated our washer and dryer for several days actually to uh, to run this <clears throat> Okay, so we used um, the Tide detergent per the manufacturer's instructions on the amount. And then we broke these down, and like I said, into three groups. So the first group is our light wash. This is according to the manufacturer's instructions. So this is what every manufacturer says, cold water, inside out, delicate wash. And, you know, I mean... Per the manufacturer, this is the way it should be done. And so we did. That's my buddy. London. So after the washing, we, uh, we set up the rack and we took it outside and uh, played ball with the dog while we waited for the sunshine to come up. Then the second group went in. So we're running this with normal wash, warm water, print side out. So this is the way, you know, that people will say commonly wash, all right? We put it in right side out, normal wash, and then into the dryer it goes. And in the dry, we set it to casual dry, medium heat. So this is reasonable, you know, uh, treatment uh, under, you know, what would be normal circumstance. Then comes group three, heavy wash, steaming hot water. The spin cycle, I don't know if you can hear me over the spin cycle, but this is what happens. You know, this thing is just building up all this pressure, 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 and finally, you know, the water to cross through these solid designs. When you do these solid designs, that spin cycle destroys them. But when you do the rasterization, the water can just flow right through them. You don't get nearly the damage that you get with, uh, with, with these solid designs. But then we took it to the next level. After that, you know, we, we, we took them out, we put them in the dryer, and we, we set it to bake. <laughs> so this is normal dry, high heat, full dry period. You know, dry, dry, dry until it's all dried out. And then we repeat it over and over and over again. Now, the factory recommends that after five washes, you should take these and you should get a baking sheet, a parchment sheet, and a hot iron and iron them. I mean, it rebuilds, it re reseals the design. And then it's back in again for another 10 rounds. So that's what we are right now. We've got these up to 10 rounds. Like I said, this is an ongoing project. We're going to continue this as it goes. As we do that, we will be posting that information onto the White Toner Success Group on Facebook. Go join if you haven't already. White Toner Success Facebook. All right, so let's see. What, here's what we did. So after washing all of those design, after washing all those shirts, we took them and, you know, we thought, all right, we take photographs of them. No, you know, we couldn't get something that was consistent enough. So we actually got a big scanner and scanned those shirts. So that way we have, you know, a consistent uh, comparison of each result that we can show you. So let's take a look at this. So here's our control, all right? Delicate wash, and this is the solid. This is the solid print. All right, so this one is not the rasterized. This is the solid print. And you can see, all right, you know, it, it, it did great under delicate wash. You know, so if you're doing delicate wash, 
any of these will work. Any 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 method of doing it will work. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at the big picture, all right? Under the big picture, so delicate wash, we're perfectly fine. Normal wash, you know, at the distance that you look at a shirt, a normal wash does the trick. It's really only until you get into the heavy wash do you really start seeing, you know, something that you would classify as cracking up. You know, from the distance that we're looking at a shirt, delicate and normal tends to be okay. It's the heavy wash that, you know, that breaks up these solid designs. Now let's look at the next one. So this is the rasterized design. Delicate, perfect. Normal, perfect. Heavy, still very good. I mean, it's still very good shape. You know, after 10 washes, this is not unreasonable results. And from the from the big picture, you're fine all the way through. I mean, delicate, normal, and heavy, all are still very wearable garments. I, I can't imagine anybody complaining about that because those look good. Now let's look at the at this big family picture because it's you know it's even a worst case uh, scenario to do all of this white and you know the solid wash. You see how it's starting to you know to really sort of break up heavy. You know it, it's gone. I mean, if you're going to do a design like this and you're not going to rasterize it and a customer is going to take it home and run a heavy wash on it, you know, I mean, all bets are off at that point. But, you know, if you look at it, even still from a distance, you know, the delicate, it looks great. Normal, it looks fine. Yeah, you know, heavy wash, you can start to see something. Let's rasterize this. We put the lines in it. And what a difference. I mean, delicate, you can't tell anything. Normal, you can't tell anything. Even under the heavy wash, the cracking that does occur tends to blend in well enough with the design so that from the distance, you're looking good. So again, you know, the two most important aspects to washing is rip settings and wash settings. So let your customers know that they need to wash these in a reasonable fashion, but you know you need to rip them. You need to rasterize the design to get the best results. Now, the next thing, you know, people ask us about the uh, uh, the size of these printers. And this has been a big issue because, you know, let's face it, I mean, the little printers are less than half the price of the big printers. The big printers in and of themselves aren't really big enough for what we would call screen print designs. You know, a typical screen print design is like 15 inches square kind of thing. So none of them will do that big of a design. And, you know, we've We've shown you earlier that you can get this product going fast enough to compete with screen print. We've shown you that the results are fast and can hold on well enough to, to be competitive with screen print. So now we've got to print some screen print size designs. To do that, we've developed this new software called SmartCut. And the idea behind SmartCut is, is that it lets you load in a full-size design, print them on multiple sheets, assemble that onto a garment, and not be able to find the seams. And that's what it does. So let's get on into this, all right? So we've got, we've got our SmartCut software up and going. This is a design that we're going to put onto a nylon pair of pants. It's 24 inches long, all right? 24 inches long. So we load this in with the eight and a half by 17 sheet size and with the eight and a half by 11 sheet size and we give it a little bit of overlap all right and that overlap is where the software will go in and find a way to cut it so that you can reassemble it without any seams so now once you've done this i've got an, a, a, a letter xl 
and a letter size sheet. And these are both in one PDF, the way we saved it here. And so now we're ready to load these into the, uh, the eye color rip. So first thing that we do, and with this version of the eye color rip, I'm going to say that when we've got a design like this that has two different page sizes, we need to load it twice. The next version I've been told by the developer is going to support the page sizes in the SmartCut software directly. All right. So we, we only have to load it once and we'll get both page sizes. Notice the transparency button. So we just press that transparency button. This design has a lot of transparency in the background to it. And by using this transparency option, we didn't put down that big layer of white behind everything. Instead, you know, we're really seeing it. We're showing a couple of different white settings here, you know, just to kind of get an idea as to what each one of those do. But, you know, in the end, I'm telling you, you know, this 150 uh, white and, you know, just the regular multiplication, that's really, I mean, that does the trick. I just really never see a time that I have to change that. Now, in this case, you know, this is going on to nylon. This is a design that's pretty much pre-rasterized. So we're just going to print this using the standard screening in the, in the rip. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other side. And here we have the opportunity to see what it's going to look like on a, you know, on a, on a blue pair of pants. And pay, pay attention to the white. Notice the full layer of the white. Look at that. Is that cool or what? So that's that transparency support. That's another reason that you need to rip. If you don't have transparency support, you know, if you're using a standard driver, it's just going to flood that whole thing with white. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking too fast. So we're pressing these. We're pressing them at 300 degrees, standard temperature for the AB pressing. This is a nice, smooth peel. You want to anticipate your peel so that when you get to the end, you can back off your pressure so that you're not pulling so hard that it jerks it. So you want to anticipate that, let it come off real nice and easy so everything stays on the sheet. <coughs> oh, again, pardon me. Now, we're... Uh, we're putting this on this this pair of ni this nylon pants, 100% nylon. All right. And, you know, nylon jackets, uh, nylon pants, you know, these things are, are uh, uh, you know, inexpensive, but they're a real opportunity, a real revenue opportunity. And, you know, for this, I mean, look at this. This is a... Uh, you know, this makes a pretty snazzy, pretty cool. All right, so here's what we did, what we're doing with this. You know, I went to the I went to the Goodwill. I like going shopping at the Goodwill. I come up with all kinds of cool stuff, and uh, I uh, I walk in with the idea to get one thing, and I'd come out and I've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, but anyway, we bought these at the Goodwill and uh, wanted to uh, see what they would do. So I'm taking this little pocket, and uh, we're, uh, we're going to press this at 300 degrees so we can see what happens. And what happens here is really not the least of our worries uh, at that temperature. But, you know, just see, just looking at that parchment sheet, how the blue sublimated into the parchment, well, that blue would have sublimated into that white design, and it would have kind of messed it up uh, had, uh, had we run it. But see, you can see 225, 225. Imagine how low that is. <clears throat> so we're pressing it to press out all those <laughs> wrinkles. And we've got two sheets. So we're going to put these two sheets together to make a 24-inch design. Pretty cool. Taking a couple of measurements. 
again, 225, 225. I mean, uh, that's, 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 that's barely warmer than a cup of tea. <laughs> uh, it's after hours here at AW. Our phone is on this internet, on the intercom ring. Uh, nothing I can do about that. So if you hear a phone ringing in the background, don't worry about it. It's going to the answering machine. Now, again, 225. We're peeling this really, really, really tightly because, you know, this is a nylon material the, and, and the PET that the A-foil is on, you know, together, they're not letting that design go real deep into this, this material. So it's imperative that you do a real tight, tight roll. And here's where we're lining it up. So we can see just how the design goes together. And the, the, the smart cut software does such a great job of cutting through that design that once it's lined up, there's no way that you can find the seams. Uh, would you fix that? Please hang it up. Uh, questions, anybody, while we're looking at this? So, again, we cool this down. Watch this tight roll. It's real important. I'm going to be, you know, sort of going over this a couple of times because uh, this is one of the key things. You know, a lot of people will will take their uh, take the design and they'll just kind of pull it back and think that that's a think that that's a tight roll. It's not. You've got to put your hand down on it and you've got to roll it. You've got to roll it tight. Tight, tight, tight roll is what you want to do because you've got to shear the design away from the transfer A foil sheet. So now we put it back in. We want to give it one more press, you know, to really kind of press it into the material. Again, 225. Now, <clears throat> this is where the interesting thing occurs here is that, you know, if we had pressed this at the 300 degrees that we did the AB peel, we would have a one legged pair of pants. All right. <laughs> Because it would have absolutely have sealed those uh, together. But it didn't. 225, we're good to go. You going to get that? <laughs> I think uh, my, my guy here is trying to figure out how to unplug that phone. Uh, and uh, anyway, hopefully we, <laughs> we, thought, we thought of most everything. We're the only two still here today. Is, uh, <laughs> I think we're just going to have to deal with the, uh, with the phone situation. Okay. All right. So, sorry about that. So here's a here's that pair of pants, and you know, and that's a pretty cool looking design. You know, you've got your 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 uh, trail type thing running down the uh, uh, down the pants leg. That's a full 24 inch uh, design. That looks cool. You know, inexpensive pair of nylon pants. Now you can't get lost. You know what your trail is because you're wearing it. All right. <laughs> Hey, you know, while we were at the uh, at the Goodwill, you know, we came up with uh, a couple of other things that are kind of cool. All right, look at here. Found this nice leather jacket, man. Look at that nice leather jacket. Hey, let's do something on a leather jacket. I mean, you know, you get a leather jacket, you want to mess, you want to, you know, mess it up. No, not mess it up. Put something cool on it. So what we did was is we came up with this design. Let's put some wings on the back. We took those wings. 
we rotated them and we put them together on one sheet so we could get both wings onto one sheet. You know, we want to maximize the media and we want to, you know, we want to take advantage of that. By the way, you know, all of these that we're showing you, you know, we bought one of these. So these are not, there's no retakes in any of this. <coughs> Sorry. You know, we're, all of this is one shot thing. I only found one of these jackets. Only there was, actually there was two pair of pants, but only one of them was blue. So, you know, we did these all in, in, in one shot. I promise. All right. <laughs> So we're peeling it, cutting out between the wings. And there we go, putting them on the jacket. And you're gonna believe me in a minute because I'm gonna show you where things didn't go the way that we thought that they would. <clears throat> so we're measuring these now. I'm using this speedy pad to press this on. Now, so for this, we're running at 240 degrees. I don't know if you saw that in the heat press there, but it's 240 degrees. This is a seamed jacket. So our speedy pad was to help get even pressure on so that we could press these wings down onto the jacket. Here's a little test run that we did down in the bottom scene, you know, just to sort of get an idea of what the uh, what the temperature was. Genuine leather made in China. Can you believe that? <laughs> and, you know, when, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I mean, you never know really what these materials are made of. But again, you know, this tight roll critical 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 you got to do this tight roll and it's especially important right at the very start because you want to make sure that your design starts releasing from the transfer sheet because once it starts releasing from the transfer sheet you're pretty well good to go from that point on you know so you want to make sure you've got a good release to begin with and then you want to carefully roll the design away from the garment well, away from the transfer sheet, the transfer sheet, away from the garment. Man, we don't get this many calls during the day. <laughs> so here we go. So you see that? It didn't come off right there. So here's what we do. You stop. You know, immediately when you notice that, stop right away. Take it back. Let's put it back on the heat press. Let's give it a little bit more pressure and let's press it again. You know, we've we've pressed it once, so we've got a feel for kind of what this garment is doing. So now we can put it back in, maybe with the pad or maybe without the pad, and start trying to, you know, press it back down onto the garment. If that doesn't work, okay, and it didn't in this case. So what I'm doing is, is I'm taking this little X-Acto knife, and I'm just catching the very tip of that piece of the design to release it from the A sheet so that the rest of it will start coming off. And there's another little spot over here again, same kind of thing. So I just take the little X-Acto knife, I just catch that little corner of it, get it released, catch it, peel it tight, 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 roll, and you're good. <clears throat> One more thing. Sometimes, regardless of how well you try and take care, sometimes something just doesn't come off. Get it, put it back on the garment, and press it. Even if you do it during the finishing press, just cut it out of the sheet, put it down, peel it off, or peel it away and stick it down like we did in this case. I mean, it came out great. It really, really, really came out great. Look at that. Low temp, man. Low temp. That's your oppor that's your opportunity. The new market segment. You know, flex your muscles there and make those wings flap. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And you know, you 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 can't feel. You know, you can't tell where the design 
and the and the leather meat. I mean, it's just part of the jacket now. It's absolutely part of the jacket. I mean, it really, really, really looks good. That is snazzy, snazzy. You may not like the design, but looks good. <laughs> so well, I was at the Goodwill. I think I mentioned that, you know, I found something else that's kind of cool, all right? I mean, staying with this low temp stuff, here's a, uh, Here's an old uh, leather uh, folder kind of thing, all right? Let's look at what we did with this. So again, we're using our eye color rip. We've uh, using it with the white toner option. We load our design. We've created this particular design with two elements. One is going to be the accents, and the other is the actual design itself. We put them both onto the same sheet. We did uh, some pullback on the white so it wouldn't print with the accents. All right. Certainly turning on that transparency option, always important. And then we printed that. Now, we've got our printer set, printer default. Notice this, printer default and printer default. That's because we've got the printer set up expecting that it's going to be getting tabloid transparency sheets so it doesn't wait. I don't have to press that online button. That's another key thing to this overall high-speed production. You want the printer to run high-speed as well. <clears throat> So we're pressing this again, 300 degrees, but when it comes time to put it onto our notebook, we're going to go back to our 240 degrees again, because it's leather. You know, you don't know what's inside this leather. You know, these have been tanned and when you start heating these up, you know, oils and stuff will come out and all of that will affect the adherence properties. When you can do it at this low temp, you know, 240, I mean, again, you know, I can set my cup of tea on this and we'd be about the same place. Then that's what's not going to let those oils come out. And that's what's going to give you good results because we can do it at that low temperature. So here's what happened. Again, top grain cowhide. I don't know how old this is, but it's old. <laughs> I think it was 99 cents. So we trimmed these off. Now here's one thing that I get, did kind of make a mistake. I wished I'd taken this sheet and used it in the next step, but I'll show you why. So again, our speedy pad. And this is another one-shot deal. We bought one of these at the Goodwill, and we pressed it, and we made one design with it. So, you know, this is a one-shot thing. We had to get it right. And we did. We didn't get it right the first time, but we got it right. <laughs> Tight roll, tight roll. Did I say that? Tight roll? Yeah, really tight roll. It's important. It's really important. It's got to be really, really tight. But even with that, all right, so this, uh, you know, this has got a little bit of a hinge to it over here. And we didn't get, you know, a good bond on that side. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Put it back on the heat press. That didn't stick. Put it back on the heat press. Don't. Don't go, stop, stop at that point, put it back on the heat press. And so now it comes off just fine. Looking pretty good already, you know? So <laughs> wait till this next step though. So that sheet, I, I should have used that sheet to trim my um, my hot stamping foil. You know, I put down this full sheet of hot stamping foil. This is, you know, this is old worn leather and there's areas on this where the leather is worn to the point that um, 
the adhesive that's holding the leather to the backing actually grabbed on to some of the hot stamping foil. But even with that, it still looks good. So you see those little bits, but this is cool. Oh, man, that looks nice. Now look at this. So this is the, the white portion of it. Position that in place. Oh, this this turned out so nice. I mean, wow, this is this is really amazing. You know, something anybody would really be proud of, especially if you were a Marine. Cool it down. Now, to sort of help emphasize, I think I've been saying over and over again, a tight peel. I'm going to use this ruler just, just no for no real pr practical purpose, just to sort of let you know that it needs to be a really tight roll. A really razor edge release gives you the best results. You know, and if you if you get in the habit of doing this, you'll do it every time automatically. You know, just just practice doing it. You'll pick it up. You'll get it right every time. Wow, look at that. Is that amazing? Huh? Does that look nice or what? Look at that. That is so cool looking. Oh, my God. That's beautiful. I mean, it's really beautiful. I mean, so this 99 cent piece, you know, look what we turned it into. Oh, and Molly, is that valuable now or what? See that you see the the uh, uh, the areas around the anchor and the eagle. You know, that was all the black that was printed and then put down on top of the hot stamping foil. I mean. That's gold, baby. That is gold. Look at that. Look at that. Is that something or what? Huh? What do you think about that? Hmm? Could you get some bucks for that? Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So there's got to be some questions out there now, I'm sure. I can't be doing that. <laughs> So oh, there um, we go. There's yeah. our deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, wanna uh, again shout out to the U.S. Cutter guys. Nice, uh, uh, nice ten percent off for uh, these uh, these packages. Uh, Smart Save is the coupon code. Josh, tell us about it. Yeah. So this is the coupon code that we are going to have uh, for all of our. Unionet eye color bundles uh, packages. So the ones that we have bundled with heat presses and everything like that, uh, you can use this coupon for additional ten percent off. So, other than that, uh, I think that's about it. I just like to say a big thank you to David Lewis and Joe Dovey from uh, Unionet for you know doing this and setting this up for us. And you know, it's been a real pleasure having you know just watching this whole webinar. You did a great job, David. Uh, thanks so much, Joe. I know it's dinner time for you, but I appreciate you sticking around as well. Uh, so Thank you, guys. Great job. Thank you so much, everyone on the East Coast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, nice crowd. Appreciate everybody coming. I really do look forward to uh, seeing you guys in the future. Say la vie. Bye-bye.